Fundamentals of Laparoscopic Surgery, Pro Tip Series, Tasks 4 and 5. The authors have no financial disclosures. Fundamentals of Laparoscopic Surgery uses five simulation stations to assess basic laparoscopic surgery skills. FLS is a reliable and valid curriculum which has been shown to improve intraoperative trainee performance. It was developed in 2004 and since 2009 has been a requirement to qualify for the American Board of Surgery Board Certification. In 2018, the American Board of Obstetrics and Gynecology announced that FLS will be a prerequisite for specialty board certification for residents graduating after May of 2020. ABUG states that this will ensure that diplomats possess critical skills for the contemporary practice of obstetrics and gynecology. The objectives of this video are to demonstrate techniques to improve technical skills during the FLS exam, to familiarize all gynecologic trainees with the FLS tasks, and to provide strategies for residents to gain confidence during the suturing and knot tying skills. This is the second video in a two-part video series aimed at simplifying tasks for trainees. Throughout the video, we will refer to the needle using the following locations. The A location is 1 to 2 centimeters from the needle swedge and used to introduce and adjust the needle. The B location is 1 third of the way from the tip and used to stabilize and retrieve the needle. And the C location is 2 thirds of the way from the tip where the needle is loaded. To load the needle, grasp the needle at the B location. Using the dominant hand in the A location, adjust the angle of the suture. Using the needle driver in the dominant hand, load the needle at the C location and perpendicular to the needle. The needle is introduced from the A location. The assistant hand grabs the B location and the needle is adjusted by shifting A back and forth. The needle is then loaded at the C position. Mastery of the skill is crucial for FLS tasks four and five. Task four is the extracorporeal knot and the materials you need are listed here. Note the recommended suture is 90 centimeters long. Penalties include deviations from the black dot, loose knots, loose closure of the drain, and importantly, drain avulsion results in automatic task failure. The first pro tip is set up. To introduce the needle, grab the A location with the needle driver in your dominant hand and the needle tip facing the direction you will suture. Introduce the needle through the port in this orientation. This allows you to immediately begin loading with minimal adjustments. Next, load the needle using the ABC technique. To review, the needle is introduced from A, grasped at B, adjusted, and then re-grasped at C in a perpendicular manner. The next pro tip is suturing. To suture, grasp the pen rows, tent it up to create tension, and manipulate the drain to expose the black dots. Rotate your hand back so the needle enters the drain at 90 degrees and drive the needle towards the black dots. By manipulating the drain and placing counter traction, exposure is improved and small adjustments can be easily made when off target. The next tip is retrieval. Retrieve the needle with your assistant hand and pull 3 centimeters while stabilizing the pen rows. Regrasp at the A location, stabilize the pen rows, and pull the suture through the port. Stabilizing the drain prevents avulsion and task failure. The final tips are for intracorporeal knot tying. When throwing a knot, push away from the knot so the suture forms a 4, as seen here. This allows you to push past the drain to cinch the knot. The first two throws are in the same direction. Wrap the taut end around your index finger to ensure tension. Push away from the knot, holding the knot pressure at the end like a pencil, and push the knot past the drain as before. The final knot is thrown in the opposite direction. Of note, these tips are for an open knot pusher, and a closed knot pusher can also be used for this task. The scissors are then introduced through the same port, and the time stops once the sutures are cut. Now we will talk about task 5, intracorporeal knots. The materials you need are listed here. Note the recommended suture length is 15 centimeters long. The penalties are the same as task four. The first three pro tips are also the same. Introduce your needle from the A location, grasp it at the B location, and adjust it from A until the orientation is correct. Load at position C at a perpendicular angle. Grab the inferior edge of the pen rows, tent it up, and expose the black dots. Rotate your hand so the needle enters the drain at a 90 degree angle and drive the needle forward through the black dots. Retrieval is different for intracorporeal knots. In task five, retrieve the needle with your dominant hand and pull laterally to shorten the tail to three centimeters. Bring the needle to the same side of the pen rows that you sutured on and rotate the driver upside down to form a rainbow orientation. The next tips are for throwing and tightening the knot. To throw your knot, move your needle driver under the rainbow using the waxy end of the suture. Two throws are performed to create a surgeon's knot. Grab the end of the tail and pull opposite and downward to cinch the knot. Going under the rainbow right at the junction of the needle and the suture uses the stiffest part of the suture and simplifies intracorporeal knot tying. The next pro tip is passing. 
Rotate the driver and transfer the needle to the non-dominant hand at the B position. This creates a smile orientation with the needle tip facing up. Using the same stiff part of the suture, go over the smile once. Move both hands, grab the tail, and pull laterally and downward to cinch the knot. As before, the smile orientation uses the stiffest part of the suture, making knot tying efficient and easy. Transfer the needle to the dominant hand and rotate the driver so the rainbow orientation is once again created. During transfer, the suture can get tangled, and in cases where throwing the knot is difficult because the suture is at the incorrect angle, grab the suture at the A location, pull it tight in the direction of the opposite port, and this will straighten it out. To cut the suture, you can either cut each individually or cut both as demonstrated here. The time stops when both sutures are cut. This is another example of straightening the suture by grabbing the A location and pulling towards the port when knot tying is difficult. In conclusion, FLS is now a requirement for all OBGYN residents. Mastering the skills requires time and effort on the part of the learner. Using these pro tips can help gain confidence and improve efficiency leading to mastery. Thank you to Drs. Newcomb, Rindos, and Dinellen for their mentorship on this project.